welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, episode 161. Anthony is tagged out. I am back in. Larry here. And uh, me and Anthony continue to, I guess, make a goal of recording more episodes uh, separate from each other than actually together. Uh, this week, Anthony is busy uh, with Thanksgiving holiday rolling up. So I have invited a very close personal friend of mine. He's been on the show before. Um, we actually, we were just talking before, so I guess uh, Mario. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm good with that, buddy. <laughs> what's, what's going on? What's happening? Thank you for having me back. Can, can I still say what's the haps to you? Oh, no, yeah. what it is, what it is. Always what, what it is. is. is what, okay. that's, that's universal, pal. Yeah. <laughs> What's the haps or something else? Yeah. It's a terrible, terrible line. Um, i never even uh, <laughs> never heard that before. So, um, so yep, yeah, so Mario's on uh, this week. We're just going to talk about some stuff. We're going to, uh, it's going to be a little more new, but we got some old stuff to discuss. So um, um, On my end, very informative because uh, Larry's going to be in, informing me. <laughs> of a lot of things that I'm not aware of. It's going to kind of be just kind of reactions from Mario at this point. Yes. See, I, I like this comfortable, look at this, right? We're across from a table from each other. I can't help this but staring how, at your mic. The, I, it's like in my face. I'm just well, kinda, it should be. That's how yeah. it works. <laughs> and, um, and of course, uh, no video because I don't know how to record video properly. Uh, nothing's charged. Uh, I know, and people can tell it's a Larry episode okay. when uh, when there's no video. Even though last week Anthony filmed video, but um, it uh, I think he had some technical difficulties. Yeah. As you can now hear me with technical difficulties adjusting my. Uh, my oh mic. boy, I think I think you broke it. Oh well, whatever. It just uh, looks like it's off the thread. Yeah, probably. I'll look at it when you're done. <laughs> We will mm -hmm. soldier on. Um, the first thing I want to talk about right off the bat is um, probably one of the that I can think of. I don't know, Mario, if you can tell me if you can think of any other example of a movie studio really truly listening to the people, listening to reactions, and making a change. Uh, that is my dryer turning off. So what I'm talking about? C certainly not Disney. What? Go on. <laughs> Disney Plus, fantastic. Um, what I'm talking about is Sonic the Hedgehog, which is now dropping February 14th, 2020. Uh, the movie. We originally were going to get it in November. The trailer originally dropped uh, last year, mm -hmm. and the absolute outcry by the fans of. The design of Sonic in this movie, people were just dumbfounded with how Sonic... Do you remember the original trailer? Yeah, no, I, I do. Uh, um, and you're a, so you're a Sega guy, you know, so... Yeah, I I, um, I had the, f the first Sonic. I played the other ones on the Genesis through friends or, or family. Uh, you, here we are almost almost 30 years later, and, and you're, you're seeing a movie-based... On the on the game and and uh, the the first trailer, um, it was kind of par the course for video game movies. It, lo it looked, you know, terrible. True, you uh, know, video game movies and, uh, do it, get a bad rap. And the design for the Sonic the Hedgehog, they they were going for that like movified version. So like, if you ever looked at the old Howard the Duck movie and then looked at the <laughs> comics, it was like almost yeah. two completely different things that were were kind of happening. And and what's Boggling my... I mean, were, were you angry at this when you saw this? I mean, I wasn't angry. I was just like, oh, man, this looks stupid. This yeah. another one to skip, you know? Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Like, I don't get yeah. angry with stuff like this, but you're right. I am like, oh, that's that's what Sonic looks so, like. So like, they, using your example of Howard the Duck, you know, back in the early uh, mid-'80s, right? mid eight No, didn't that come out? 85, 84, okay, yeah. maybe? So mid-'80s, obviously know. way before the internet, so we kind of mm. didn't have a choice. Plus, um, I think if people had an issue with how Howard the Duck looked. Mm -hmm. It was kind of kept to themselves. I'm talking about the adaptive No, 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 no. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. I'm not, I'm not saying right. Howard the Duck himself. I'm just right. your example. Um, and not only that, but they also used, that was uh, like, you know, prosthetics. That was a, a real yeah, tangible this, this, thing. This is all CG. We're talking CGI Easy and to, man to manipulate to look the way you exactly. want it to. So, yeah. They created Sonic. Uh, everyone complained. He, he, his features were odd. You know, his limbs were just, um, just weird looking, too thin. He had no gloves. His, his eye, everyone complained about his human eyes and his human teeth. Uh, right. Okay. And that was just kind of the big thing. So, yeah. trailer drops. Storyline, I mean, as far as I know, they didn't change the story. So, the story's going to be the same. But 
the way he looks, just what people were like, this is crazy. You know, in a world where when they try and, you know, for a while movies were trying to bring if something from a comic or a cartoon, they wanted to bring into real life, into like a real life movie, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. They tried to make it real. They, like, like if this existed in the real world, what would it look like? You know what I mean? You know, kind of like the Dark Knight trilogy, the way that was going, where the villains were kind of like based in reality in a way. Um, they, they they definitely went for, I, I, I'm going to say they went for a practical aesthetic. Yeah. I wouldn't call it any more real than that's what I mean. Tim you know, Burton, I, but they went for something that looked practical and yeah. applicable. I know what you're saying. So, yeah. all right. So mm-hmm. the internet does what it's supposed to do and blows up and complains tremendously about yeah. this original trailer. The, the, the internet's a funny entity like that, huh? <laughs> But who is the demographic complaining? That's what I... I mean, I, I can't... Guys like us, we're, we're, you're... you're. I'm hitting 40. You're at the end of your 30s. I'm into my 40s now. I can't imagine it's us. Like, we're... we're you know... But then, then that leaves... I mean, Sonic's been around 30 years. I mean, has there... I mean, obviously, I'm out of the loop. To me, Sonic was a thing in the 90s. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know they made games on other systems and they did crossovers with Nintendo, but Sonic has had that kind of mainstay popularity all this time. Totally. Well, they're making a movie, I guess, but where the crowd that I would think who would be getting outraged over this would be like the 13 to 15 year old crowd. See, here's what I, th- so I think like, it's definitely. Who's the demographic that this movie's catered to? It's probably a little bit of everybody. Yeah. You know, the kids with the goofiness, the adults with the nostalgia factor. Um, and yes, yeah, Sonic game wise has had hits, tremendous hits and tremendous misses. Right. Um, I think the most recent game of theirs, Sonic Mania, was a tremendous hit on Switch, on Xbox, on PlayStation. The game is phenomenal. Came out a couple years ago. There was the that's la- where I got my giant Sonic uh, statue back there on the Genesis. There was a Sonic game I played on PlayStation Three. Generations, I think it was. Sonic called. Generations was good. Like the, it was all right. Yeah, that was the last one I yeah. ever tried. And mind you, the, the last game I had played. Before that was probably Sonic CD or Sonic <laughs> Spinball on the Genesis. Sonic when I was Spinball. Younger. But I'm just saying, like, no, that, I, yeah. So I there's a gap for me. Like I missed a lot of stuff. So, so the trailer comes out. Everyone complains. This is right. not what Sonic looks like. The, again, the teeth in the eyes. That was the biggest concern. The teeth in the eyes. Even, so to, uh, yeah. even for a non fan, it it just he, he didn't look. He good. didn't look right. It didn't look like a good animated exactly. character. It just looked dumb. So. That happens. Mm-hmm. No one complains about Jim Carrey as Robotnik because Robotnik being a thin. You know, you know, not a fat, overweight, bald. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But at the end of the original trailer, mm-hmm. the original trailer after like the end, you do see Jim Carrey as almost Robotnik with that head of Robotniks that we all remember. So something probably eventually happens in the game, uh, in the movie, um, where he does kind of sure. go a little old school. Okay. All right. So that happens. Internet blows up, and to the credit, to the credit of Paramount, who are putting out this game. They said, you know what? We hear you. We're going back to the drawing board. We will redesign Sonic. And thus, and, you know, admit, no offense, Mario, this is where I wish Anthony was on the episode because go for it. He would have the, you know, probably the idea of, and we talked a little bit about it last time about how much it would have cost Paramount to go back and redesign this character for the entire movie. Um, you know, I don't know if that means having to maybe reshoot some scenes depending on, you know, what they had to do. Uh, I don't know if they needed to go back and redo the the voice, but Paramount stepped up to the plate and they did something about it and no one knew what they were going to do. You know, things were still in the air. Sure. They could have made it worse at this point. They could put like an actual hedgehog in it. What I think helped where we got to. Yeah. What I think helped where we got to right. is uh, Detective Pikachu, the movie, Detective Pikachu. Okay. That movie comes out shortly after the original trailer, and that movie was... Fin- and I'm, let's storyline... I'm not going to talk about storyline. I think the movie was good, great from a storyline. Well, what's the general consensus as far? People liked it, but I'm talking about the wow. way it looked. It what That movie was done properly. Those Pokemon... Looked like they were pulled straight from the video game into a real world. And as goofy as or unrealistic as whatever Pokemon would be, that was the one in the movie. The only difference, maybe a little fur 
to make it look lifelike. But Give other it a than texture that, or something. Exactly. Look like a, yeah, okay. Other than that, it was a Pokemon. Wow. And that's when that came out, everyone went, yo, Paramount, this is how you do it. And I think that helped. And Jenna, the movie was a success. I, I, oh, total. I completely didn't this even know it. this thing existed. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, so it was Ryan a big Reynolds, hit. Yeah, so, Ryan Reynolds uh, plays Pokemon, uh, plays Pikachu. Um, uh, really the only uh, Pokemon that talked. Okay. But, right. Um, you know, everything in it just, it's a great movie. Even if you're not into Pokemon, I think it was a great movie. Okay. It made me wish I played Pokemon from it, day one. Well, it is nice to see that, you know, finally we're ge- you're getting a couple of video game based movies that are actually good i mean uh, they did not have the best was, track you're right. record there was a you string know? of movies that was um i mean we can name probably on one hand really good uh video game movies i thought the first resident evil movie was fantastic i really liked it i i'm talking about not not so much on a personal level as no no i of, think even just i think I, just I don't, don't, overall, those movies did poorly no, though the Anderson, no 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 I think the first, I mean, as they they made like five or six of them, but I think any series at that point starts right. to lose traction. Okay. But I think the first one or two did really well. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm pretty sure the first Mortal Kombat did well, good. And even in the beginning, even, uh, what's second her name? So Jolie's Tomb Raider. That was kind of a hit, wasn't it? Angelina well, Jolie's Tomb Raider. Well, doesn't mean it was a good, good. movie. No, I know it's, yeah. 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 But, Though the newer one, the remade one, a couple years ago, I thought was really good. There's another one. See, there I'm was, out of yeah. the loop with these. So, I mean, to me, the, the, the Mortal Kombat's the one. Go to that, that's that camp. soundtrack was fantastic. It, that, that's pure <laughs> that, camp. That yeah. was EDM and house before EDM you know? and house. I, I, so <laughs> I remember when they attempted Super Mario Brothers with Bob Hoskins. I still love that movie. He was. They said he was like drunk every he day. He wanted nothing to do with that movie. Yeah, he, people that talk a... to him about it. They just shut him up. Yeah. Where was I? Think I met. Yeah, I met the. Oh, I can't remember her name. Who played Daisy in the movie? Who played the princess? Right. And um, there was some people there who had some like deep cut Super Mario Brothers movie memorabilia. One guy had a script somehow. It was pretty cool. Sometimes movies like that end up becoming like these cult yeah. phenomena. You know, like it's so people remember it being so bad at the time. It gives them a laugh when they get older. One of my, my favorite television show of all time, Mystery Science Theater Three Thousand, is based uh, on that is, concept. Is based on the whole principle. So. Yeah. All right, so the new trailer drops of mm-hmm. Sonic. Right. And lo and behold, they Paramount knocks it out of the park. I just saw it. It, it looks like it's going to have the appeal to the, you know, it's much better than a, than what I first saw. It was, like, I was kind of almost expecting they were going to take the original trailer and just throw the new Sonic in. But right. it was like a new, it was like an updated trailer, as they would have done anyway. Different scenes. Like, yes. Yeah, it was more Sonic focused. Like, you actually saw yeah. the Green Hill Zone, like the actual loop. You see the and loop. Everything and on you, Mobius. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. assuming it should be Mobius, his home know. planet. Um, and then the Earth, and then uh, you see a little more Robotnik in different situations. Uh, and you see Sonic, and just Sonic, they nailed it. He's got gloves. His, his arms, someone mentioned his arms are like spaghetti like, which they are in the game. So they're like this in the movie. Um, he's got bigger sneakers, which is cool because it kind of makes sense. That's the game. He he looked like he looked like Sonic. Yeah. And the only thing, because with the eyes, this was big because everyone was complaining about the eyes in the first one because they were just right. too human. But in the game, the way he's drawn, it's technically it, one big eyeball. It makes it look it makes him look no uh, like it's connected. The eyeballs yeah. are connected at the bottom. They put a bridge. They did, and that's fine. And that's perfectly that. fine. Yeah. And he just looks like he's pulled from the game, and that's how it was. And the internet exploded the other way now, yeah. where they said, thank you, thank you. With that being said, and we could talk about the trailer, but go and watch the If you haven't seen the trailer, go I and did. watch it. I did. I watched it. it. Yep. I, actually, that was my research. I, I went and even and watched those who I like the scene where he's playing baseball with himself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and even go back and watch the original and the newer one just to see the differences. Um but this is crazy how Paramount actually listened to the fans. Can you even think of a time where a movie listened to the fans like that, to that point, where they put... I mean, this had to add like a third of the budget to the movie. I don't know if I'd go that far. I mean, I don't know. I'm just uh, uh, exaggerating at some points. You know, I mean, just on observation, and this is just my opinion, I have personally thought the quality of CG has declined the last 10 years. I agree. I think there's a... You know, it was artificial... If you look... At say even comparing the Lord of the Rings to the Hobbit, which weren't made that far apart from each other, the Hobbit looks like a video game. It doesn't <laughs> like the yeah. Lord of the Rings look like he combined puppeteering and and really well made, well drawn out, uh, rendered CGI. Like the Hobbit looks like, and that's made 
So it makes me, you You're know. Right. Um, I was watching. That said, it, it for a video game movie like Sonic, why wouldn't that work? You know, you can have that exaggeration, just like you had, like uh, hand drawn animation with Hugh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You you can kind of have that. You can make that work. I hope they make it work with this movie. You know? I hope so too. You know, it's funny. Last night on YouTube, I was just flipping through mm-hmm. and I saw an old uh, uh, Tonight Show with David Letterman, and he had Tom Savini on. This is mm-hmm. like mid eighties. Right. And Savini was showing some of the props that he used, like in uh, what was it uh, Friday Thirteenth. Uh, like the final chapter, that one, oh, yeah. and some, and just like these props, and they just look so realistic. Back in '84, yeah, you know, you're right. A lot of they, uh, a lot of companies do over oversaturate with the CGI. It, um, it's also the, it's not you know, like you know, it can work. It's just I see a decline in the quality of the CG alone. Like you know? for example, and and I know you being you, so just remember what kind of podcast we're on. I'm not going to ask you to delve deep into it. No, I'm not going into. All anything. I'm going to say is this. You know, when they switched Yoda from a puppet to CGI, that looked weird. <laughs> so, yeah, I, and I tell you the truth, <laughs> uh, are you talking about the prequels? Are you talking about? I think the Star yeah, Wars I think they prequels? changed. I think, and I think they even went back because and redid one of the puppets you, as a CGI. If what happened was the Phantom Menace when it was first released. Yoda was a puppet in it. Yes, and the Phantom Menace was unique because Lucas was kind of just starting to use more CG. He said mm-hmm. when he was going to do Attack of the Clones and the next one. It was going to be CG sets. It was going to be CG yeah. characters and everything. Like, Jar Jar was like an experiment. Yeah. So when he went to Attack of the Clones, Yoda was all CG. And then he went back yeah. and changed Yoda to CG for the Phantom Menace. Yeah, which was just weird. Um, but that's what I'm saying, like, between practical versus CGI. Yeah, I mean, on one end, the puppet Yoda, you you can feel its weight when you watch yeah. it. It looks physical. It looks real. On on the other hand, you could see its movements are clunky. Yeah. It, it blinks very deliberate. uh and then you you know you take it with the CG and, and again the CG was very experimental mm-hmm. back then, so I wouldn't say it was as good as uh, to me the pinnacle was the Lord of the Rings yeah the use of CG and then it was down or King Kong for that matter was okay even, yep was yep. good too uh so getting back to Sonic yeah let's, with this so now <clears throat> everyone's on board there was a meme that actually Anthony put up on the Retro Gamers page I'm gonna paraphrase it because mm-hmm. I don't have it in front of me but he's basically saying okay. Everyone listen. You know the studio listened to you. They went back. They took more time and more money and changed it. Like we feel almost obligated at this point to see the movie. Do you feel that every at this point now, almost as an obligation and almost like a thank you, should all the should the fa- I'm not saying you personally, but no, I know that all the fans <laughs> go and. Now anyone, go and see this movie. Anyone who griped, listen. At the end of the day, it's and real, I mean properly. Don't bootleg it. All right, you bums. It, it's, go it's, and pay and watch the movie. It's at the end of the day, the, the dollar you make. It's it's your choice. But you know what? If you had took the time to go online and cry about this stuff, put your money where your mouth is. Or not even cry. Doesn't have, I mean? Yeah, there were a lot of crybabies. Uh, kind of like those okay. who are hitting with Google Stadia. And, uh, but even those who... Let me soften who, that a little. I'm just yeah. saying, but, you know, who... Because there are... To be fair, yeah, it was, it was a, a rough go you with know, that first trailer. It was, you know, listen, they, they, for people who are passionate and people who want to see something done right on screen, I understand. It was, So a change was made. This looks to resemble more of the video game combined with whatever story they're going with. So, you know... All right, so they did something for you. Put your money where your mouth is. Would that's okay? So go see the movie now. Like, are you, you again? I'm not saying whether or not you're going to go, but after seeing the second trailer, are would you be more inclined to see the movie now if you weren't interested in seeing the movie before? <laughs> uh, as a I, as a as a theory. So if I were a passionate Sonic fan who collected Sonic the past thirty, I would I would go see it. Yeah, okay, hundred percent. Right. Uh, all righty. You so know. we'll see. We'll see. So uh, honestly, yeah, I would go see it. Uh, I probably, and compared to the first trailer, I would not have. Yeah. You know, because even the story looks better, and you know, and everyone kept saying, "Oh, I'm now I'm interested in seeing this movie." So we'll see. We got Valentine's Day. We got some time. They have to make an Alex Kidd movie next. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. How about Fantasy Star? Don't they have a like? Isn't there I don't one? Know. Or... I don't know that I know. I they gotta have a get Wing back. Commander. I, I gotta get back to Fantasy have Star. Have you been playing? Four. Have you how how have you been with the uh, Genesis Mini? I'll tell you the truth, it weaned off. Yeah, they all do. Very quickly, and the big problem with the Genesis Mini is that uh, it's it's a fun system, the the imagery is beautiful, the music that they put, the menus, everything is good. They have, out of 42 games, they're all quality games. The problem is, 
at least 70% of these games are the exact same platforming shooting genre. That, that there's not... I can't think of a single sport game on there, and the Genesis was known yeah. for their sport games. Uh, you know, so I think it's 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 good. It's hit and miss. Um, All right. You know, like I said, I stick to the space shooters because I rarely ever play them, and I can't even clear the first level, so it's five minutes out of my day. <laughs> I got to get back to Fantasy Star 4. I was doing pretty good in it. And then, like, I go to these, like, default games. I go end up playing, like, you know, Golden Axe or Streets of Rage 2, and I really don't play anything I else. Into, I never really got into Streets of Rage. I gotta get into that. Well, Streets of Rage 2 is the one to get into. Okay. I mean, win for Streets of Rage 4. Yeah, looks See what good. happens. And that's modeled after 2, for the most part. Yeah, but yeah totally. So. Uh, all right. You know, speaking of, uh, we're just gonna kind of trek right along here. Uh, I, I kind of brought this up to you before. I, I was looking into it, you know, I was... Last week, uh, I was back in my old neighborhood at my parents' house, and right around the corner from my pa- well, not right around the corner, but up the block and near the avenue, there used to there's a building that used to be there that is they they knocked it down. I guess they're rebuilding something. Um, it was like a like a double home or something mm-hmm. like that. But even before that, when I was in I was in high school, right? Uh, I would say like sophomore, junior years, like middle high school. Um, there, it was an arcade. And it was like just it was like a house just with a bunch of arcade machines. Uh, it was the only one near me that I knew of that had WrestleFest, which is why I was always <laughs> there. Uh, I remember there was a pool, there was a pool table, there was a yeah. bunch of games, and like in the back room was uh, WrestleFest and a couple of any Mortal Kombat maybe. Um, though my timing may be off on those years, don't hold me to it. But um, so you know, and I thought about it, and also as I'm driving to my parents, there's a um, a, a public storage okay. facility. That used to be Funtime USA. Oh, wow. Which was a <laughs> giant arcade. Uh, it was like an arcade, a party room, all this stuff. They used to, every month almost, they'd have wrestlers there. We'd, me and my friends would go get autographs. Sure, sure. Yeah. But it was a great arcade. Um, I mean, I didn't grow up on Long Island, but I know you've talked about some arcades that were out here back in the day. I remember Time Out in Roosevelt Field. I remember there was an arcade even before that. <clears throat> and... Uh... Believe it or not, Adventureland had one of the best arcades. Adventureland, yes, ever. <clears throat> and that's what it's kind of. You got, sorry, yeah. I got no. Unfortunately, I got no water except for. Don't worry water. about I it. Yeah. I mean, I got a beer if you want. Uh, so. No, no, I'm good. Um, <laughs> Even though it's ten something in the morning. Do you remember the arcade in Penn Station? That was a little sleazy hole. You remember that place? <laughs> no. Oh my god! <laughs> I used to go in there when I was a kid. Man, that was scary. Well, I can only yeah, imagine. Yeah, be careful in there. Oofa. Um, and then, like every like uh, like the pizzerias would have an arcade in there. Seven Elevens used to yeah. have. I used to oh god, I used to go to Seven Eleven when I lived in Westbury. I mean, he they used to get any arcade. That, that's <laughs> where I played the Ninja Gaiden arcade. Okay. Um. But uh, that's where I first played Street Fighter too, and then all the kids were showing up there. Yeah, uh, the I used to. Me and my uh, my parents uh, used to uh, go to um, a beach club uh, during the summers, and they had about like three or four arcades. I remember that's where I first saw Street Fighter 2. Um, I remember my first quarter, I was on for a half hour. I was E-Honda. It was before you, you kind of realize what cheaping is. You know, get the guy in the corner, just hit <laughs> yeah, him with yeah, the yeah, thousand well, hand well, slap. Yeah. And um, the also, block throw. <laughs> yeah. They also had Dark Stalkers. I remember yeah. I saw that one for the first time. They did have uh, Asteroids. And nowadays we have like Barcade. We have a place called Yestercade, which is in Jersey. I heard of that. Uh, one, so yeah. Barcade, Bar Arcade, mm-hmm. um, great establishments, of course. We love them. Uh, Yestercade is more of a, uh, you pay by the hour. You go in, they have tons of arcades, you go, you pay a flat fee for the hour and all the games are on free play, no which kidding. I think is a great idea. Wow. And there's also various locations there's that may have a game or two. Variations of the original. Exactly. But theme. there's no true arcade anymore, I feel I like. don't think with, with the with cost of energy that you okay. can have that anymore. Can you imagine what it would cost to have a, 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 a just to rent like a little mom and pop place and put fifteen arcades, what the electric bill would I mean, be like. Well, that's one thing, but also I think that's... it's just with today's day and age. I just think the the way because remember those uh, monitors that are in the old original arcades, the CRT screens, they're all starting to burn out. They literally do not make them anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. are literally not made anymore. Like I know uh, when I speak to my when I uh, talk to my friends over at Barcade, I think they're just self fixing them. And even I just heard recently, like like installing a CRT screen, 
if you don't do it right, you can almost literally get killed from the electric. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, those, if you don't those, do it right, if you don't those, ground yourself or something, you, you gotta probably you gotta ground yourself, blow those, yourself up. Those things, um, they induce they induce voltage. Absolutely, yeah, big yeah. time too. I heard. Yeah. So I think that's probably more like for the maintaining. Even though more th- like Arcade yeah. One Up has come has come out with some wonderful machines, mostly for the home, but it's an idea. See, it's an idea. That, that's what I would think would be the way to go is to start getting some of those machines. Mm-hmm. Right. But then in a, like in a bar setting, because at least now you you're, you've got alcohol to cover a lot of your costs. <laughs> yeah, and, that's true. And you limit the amount of arcades you have, or mm-hmm. or, or a pinball or something. But but even pinball's high maintenance. Uh, I mean, it can be. Yeah, I know Barcade yeah. is starting to bring in a lot of pinball machines. I think there's a pinball Hall of yeah. Fame in Jersey somewhere, not that yeah. far from where it, we are. It was just as part of the art. It was part of that experience totally. as, as the arcade machines themselves. Uh, so. They had a good run for a couple of years, and I just think, like you said, the maintenance and the cost. Once you paid, once the machine was paid off, and that that's the easy part. Now you got to maintain them. Now yeah. you have to that's cover your costs exactly. of your and business. It that's a it's a very difficult. Yeah. Uh, in today's day and age, people and, and that's why it. you see them in places like what Dave and Buster's used to be, like big yeah. chain, exactly. glamour, exactly. franchise restaurants that can cover that kind. Like that Chuck had e. that Cheese overhead. back yeah. in the day. Well, Chuck E. Cheese was created yeah. by the guy who created Atari. Yeah. So, and, and even if you look at the machines that are in there today, they're they're, they're, they're not the same. It's not the same experience. It depends. You know? You're right. I mean, like when I'm in Barcade, it feels like it, but that's also because mm. we're all in the same age group yeah um like back in the day you would go to the arcade you'd hang out with your friends oh, it was yeah. a safe spot you know what i mean well also back in the day there weren't a lot of jerks some, around so you, nah, you had a lot of there was some yeah well, some no, of the you got you bullies around. yeah you of had course. some rough people that, and some, but that, that uh, was hustlers. growing up yeah that yeah was growing that's up. part of the, that was it, life it yeah was life that's part of the whole yeah. experience but yeah. um i don't know maybe hopefully one day we can see really that that return to the arcade like i said yestercade is great for the family having that uh, meaning, I mean, yes, Kate's great. We you know definitely if you look, check them out, look, check them look, out. But. Look how the Cradle of Aviation does it. They're they're a museum, so yeah. In that in that spirit, in that context, you can do it you exactly. Know? Uh, or even have like that pay per hour, or you know yeah. what I mean, kind well, of you a pay flat, a flat rate fee, and then exactly. you can play whatever you want up there. And and you know, you know if but we it, can get like a barcade out here on Long Island, please, if you're listening, barcade on Long Island would be fantastic. I may go work for you. <laughs> it, yeah, I'll tell you what. It, I I wouldn't be surprised. It's just again. I'd be there every week. It's, forget about it's it. It's Long Island, as you know, is very expensive. No, I know. I That's know. the big problem. But I think a barcade could do a, a fairly I well so. around or, here, or at least close to Levittown. Yeah, I could yeah. see it happening. Um, and folks, if you're listening, remember mm-hmm. you can check us out on Facebook, on Instagram, on uh, YouTube. On uh, Twitter, uh, basically on Twitter, we're uh, at Retro Gamers Pod. Everywhere else is at Retro Gamers Podcast. Uh, let us know if you have any uh, local arcades near you, whether it's um, you know uh, an alcohol establishment or <laughs> you know something where it is like pay by the hour. If you have a traditional old school arcade, you know like Game On, our, our friends over at Game On. Oh yeah, have, they have some. They have some nice machines. Awesome there. machines, and they have young guys that are very good. At maintaining and passionate as well, yeah. yeah. At maintain, they're very so, good technicians. They maintain that stuff. They'll fix and clean your systems. Yep, they're I mean, pros. They're, they're good, good to begin with. So definitely check them out if you're on Long yeah. Island, uh, Smithtown, and Miller next Place. Time, next time my ki- kids are here, we should go out there. Absolutely. Now, I know this weekend's out of the question. No, I mean, listen, I'm not. Home. I'm busy later tonight. Maybe we can do it. Let me know. We'll they're, see. They're we'll talk out of their minds. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. Um. All right. So and, yeah, I've got a question oh, for you. What do you got? You, I, I don't know if many of all your listeners know this. Uh, Larry and I are, are neighbors. Yes, we are all, now. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We, we share a, uh, an apartment, not the well, same apartment, apartment complex. Com- yes, an apartment complex, a very complex apartment. I'm on the bottom floor. Larry's on the top floor. And um, for all intents and purposes, he stopped by last night with his uh, Google. Uh, yes, Stadia. Stadia. Why don't we get into that? Larry, a, tell, tell me about your experience. That's a wonderful segue. I like it. You Anthony like would be so proud. <laughs> sometimes I, I throw out gems. Sometimes I throw out duds. I mean, that's just the way it is. So happens. my um, my hands-on experience with the Google, mm-hmm. uh, Google Stadia. I love it. Okay. I love it. It. It, it's it's a great concept. Yeah. Um, you know, it's still I only have three games for it. Uh, what happened was when it released originally when it released, and if you have the Founders Edition, which I have, okay. which basically I ordered like day one, maybe day two, I ordered it. All right, back in June. Um, Founders Edition comes with three months of Google Stadia Pro. 
Now Google St- now you can play Google Stadia without a subscription. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But with a subscription, which is like better it's, content. Yes, and it's it's mm-hmm. no different than PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold. Okay. Um, it's just billed monthly as opposed to yearly. You know, if they do okay. yearly, I would probably mm-hmm. I'd rather that. But it is what it is. So you get three months of that, and with Pro, you get Destiny Two. It was a free game. Okay. Full game, DLC, everything. So this is the way gaming is going, it seems. It's, it seems like it. You know. So it's all cloud-based. Okay. Remember, there's no... Technically, you can say the system is a Chromecast. Chromecast Ultra it is, which wow. is their 4K Chromecast, which just hangs on may, the back of the TV. May I ask, just out of... Because now you're, you're kind of piquing my interest a little bit. What is the monthly fee for... Um, Ten bucks a month. That's it? But for ten bucks, you get... Like the free, well, I don't know if you, if you subscribe, you automatically get Destiny Pro, uh, Destiny Two, but you would get, you know, special games each month, probably special right. deals, okay, just like PlayStation Plus. But also, you would play, you get full 4K HDR, 5.1 sure. surround sound. Okay, you can play it without the subscription. If you play without the subscription, then you max out at 1080p. No problem there still. Not really. Especially yeah. if you don't have a 4K television. If you don't have a 4K right. television, then it's kind of useless, useless to do it. useless anyway, yeah. Unless you want some of the perks of the games and sales and things. Right. So, Destiny 2 comes with it. And 12 games were going to be available at launch. Okay. Not bad at all. But the internet being the internet, oh, only 12 games, that's it? Like, what? So, uh, I, sometimes I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Don't and I love fr- all the fans uh, yeah. and the listeners, but... Don't don't get too uh, frustrated with that stuff. Anyway, I mean, everything is running the way a certain way that the, the games will get released. People are going <laughs> to cry anyway. It doesn't, well, you know... Like Par- don't let it take away from your phone. Like Paramount, Google listened to everyone and goes, right. all right, we'll give you 10 more games at launch. And now there's like 22 games at launch. Okay. Not only that, but I guess people uh, want more free stuff. So, Google goes, okay... If you got the Pro Edition, you get Destiny 2, and we'll give you Samurai Showdown. That's an, uh, very cool. I used to play the original. <laughs> I started playing for the first. It's, it's great. Yeah. So, okay. So, Samurai Showdown, Destiny 2 I have. And then they had, like, for a launch uh, sale, they had some good games on launch sale. Okay. Um, so, I picked up Tomb Raider Definitive Edition for 10 bucks. Right. So, I'm like, you know what? Let me download that as well. Other great games is Red Dead 2, there's Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a couple of the other Tomb Raiders, there's a few Tomb Raiders on there. Wow. NBK two, uh, <laughs> NBA 2K20, um, uh, Grid, which is a racing game, which I may pick up, that's still full price. You know, there's a lot of games available. So, but I got my three games. Right. Very happy. Okay. And two of them are very graphic heavy. Destiny 2, gra- very graphics heavy. Um, Tomb Raider, graphics heavy and right. story heavy. And Samurai Showdown is what it is. You know, I'm just saying it's just a it's a two D it's, it's, it's a two D fighter. Yeah, I got you. Oh, okay, right. so you get the system, which is basically the controller, which I have my uh, Founders Edition color scheme. Uh, I think it's like midnight blue or something. Okay, and the Chromecast Ultra dongle, which is just a 4K Ultra uh, uh, Chromecast. So very easy to hook up. Just plug it into the back. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a um, an AC adapter that you plug into it, but through the AC adapter you can plug an Ethernet cord, which I thought was really cool. Oh, wow. So it, instead of having it wireless, it's Ether, it's, which I always try and hook up. If you can hook up the system, hook it up wired. That's my suggestion. Um, and that's it. You saw the box when I opened it. It's almost like a Fire Stick. Yeah. For like games. Well, that's, right? that's yeah. it's Google's version of a yeah, Fire Stick, stick yeah. which is Am- Fire Stick is Amazon's version of a Roku. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Which is just another version of Apple TV. So, you know, it is what it is. So um, so I, I put and now before this, I'm seeing these reviews online. Everyone's like, oh, well, you know, the, the lag is terrible. Uh, you know, it, it, the jitteriness of the games. And I'm like, okay, let me prepare for this because I got an email about a day before I got the system. Okay. Google saying, here's what you do to prepare for Google Stadia. You know, um, if you have an Ethernet, if you have a dual band uh, Wi Fi, I should say. Okay. 2.4 hertz or whatever. The nerds go back, no, it's 2.0. 2.4 hertz or five gigs. Go with the five gig. That's the five G that like we have here. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, Wi-Fi versus Ethernet. Go Ethernet if you can. Okay. Okay. All this. But then the last one goes: If you're gonna play Google Stadia, don't have anyone else stream movies, stream music, or stream video games. In other words, if I want the perfect situation, situation I need you, you and the tenant on the main floor to, to not stop. do anything. Oh well, yeah. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> Which, sorry, dude. I, just fu- I just thought it was funny to see that. Mm. All right, I'm like, okay, that's concerning. So it is what it is. I get the system. I hook it up. No lag whatsoever. Well, that's good. Maybe. It's amazing how people who are probably were on the beta 
yeah. which is not guaranteed to work 100%. Right. Even right now, even what I have now, I don't think it's like a full official launch. And I'm sure with every up, update exactly. and stuff, you, and they'll fix something. And that's the idea. The yeah. update's all on Google's side. I mean, that's the world we There's live no in now. It's, it's, it's been that yeah. way with everything, you know. There's no system to, like, if I boot up my Xbox One right now, I know there's going to be a system upgrade, update that's going to take 25, 25 minutes. minutes. Yeah. If I want to play PUBG, that's going to be another half hour. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, this is all on Google's side, which is cool. Then everyone starts complaining about codes. What happened was you needed a code from Google to get on Stadia, especially for the Founders Edition. Now, this is where I will admit that Google probably dropped the ball a little bit. Okay. I ordered mine in June. I know people who ordered in August, August and September. Right. They got the controller and the Chromecast before I did, and some of them got the codes before I did. Mm-hmm. That was a little weird. I got kind of like when I got my Genesis Mini before you. I, yeah, that's true. Yeah. This, actually, yes. I, maybe it's just this apartment. <laughs> maybe it's you. <laughs> uh, I very well could be. Um, uh, what else? Um, yeah. So people were complaining about that. You know, but people weren't getting their codes, and some people still don't have their codes. Okay. Um, and Google has admitted, you know, they're trying their best to get that out. So I will admit that is a pain in the butt. Okay. Especially because if you have the controller and you don't have the code, you can't play. So now you just have a new Chromecast Ultra. It's just kind of you can stream shows on. <laughs> but besides that, I boot up the system mm-hmm. and I tried all three games. Maybe a little, you know, like stutter step once or twice. That's the biggest problem I saw. Okay. I've seen worse on physical media booting up. It happens. Besides yeah. that, it streams like a charm. It's in 4K, at least on my screen, it's 4K. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm excited no about lag. Samurai yeah. Showdown. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely show it to you. No lag. Yeah. It's been fantastic. Good. I think people are now just creating negative uh, reviews of it just to get the hits. That's. I think that's part of it. I think uh, because uh, it's one thing to complain about not but getting. You, but you know, people are onto that negativity today. Oh, I, I've noticed. You know, like somebody puts out a book that isn't in in the current trend, and people start putting negative. I think people kind of know, like, all right, this guy is just you know. Sh- I'm negative sometimes. Yeah. I'm fully admit. But the, you you can read. You the suck. Limited run. What you can read the difference in content and context of a negative review of someone who actually did something yeah. or somebody who's just writing something exactly. to write. Exactly. Ten nine times out of ten, they never even opened the box or tried the product or read the book or, or whatever it is. I'm you a know? firm believer in those who have these negative Google Stadia reviews. Yeah. Have Google Stadia and they're still playing. One hundred percent. Put your money where mm. your mouth is. Return it or something. So that's all. But yeah. I. Uh, there's so much luxury in this stuff today. It's so high tech and advanced. That yeah. everybody's going to find now, something to complain about. Now, you know? the argument will now show up as, which is a valid argument, and me and Anthony go back and forth on this, mm-hmm. physical versus digital. Google Stadia is purely digital. Now, granted, the in concept, I can start Tomb Raider on my Chromecast Ultra on my TV. If I The iPhone isn't compatible yet. It will be down the road. But if I had like a Google Pixel phone, sure, I can go straight from the TV and start playing with that controller on my phone. And I can go from that to my Chromecast book, my Chromebook, and play. So that's the idea. The idea is you kind of pick up and kind play like wherever a, you like want. A, like a Switch. Like a Switch, yeah. but you don't. it's not the yeah, one system. Right, right, you, right. You know, which I like that idea. Also, there's no physical media, which I'm a big fan of. I have no more room, as yeah. you can see. Yeah. Um, and I like the idea of the cloud. I'm all in on the cloud. I'm all in on digital. Right. So... I and you know I know again guys like Game On and other stores uh, Game Dude over in LA they don't want to hear it but I think the cloud is the future of gaming and I just think for these newer games I think physical media is starting to go to the wayside. I think that's I think that was always bound to happen. No whether you agree with it or disagree with it uh you're talking about resources, you're talking about space, you're talking about unnecessary costs and, and printing up discs or chips or whatever the hell they use today. Even though it's you know? weird, a lot of times the uh, physical media gets discounted drastically the, the one, and, the, and the digital stuff just stays at full the price. The one thing, I mean, to me, the only, the implications that you have to worry about, honestly, are the moral implications. All right, yeah, you know, technically, well, I don't own the game outright uh, when you have digital. And I mean this and, more towards movies, too. You you buy a movie on the cloud or, or whatever for digital, they alter it on you, they edit it on you, they change it on you. Well, I never seen that happen. Not- it's coming. Look look what's going on. You know Disney Plus bought Fox and they are 
eliminating movies from the Fox library. That All right, let's not, well, let's not, let's not get the conspiracy theories That's not in conspiracy. on this. But, They're actually doing Well, I know, like, like the, yeah. the Michael Jackson episode of The Simpsons is not on Disney+. Plus. They took it off. So, uh, and that's the problem. And then what will happen is what if you, you buy something that three months from now they deem inappropriate and they just take it away without giving you your money back? Well, it's a subscription. So, you uh, know, that's where that is. Yeah. You know, there it's, you, you know, you're not, yeah. you don't own so all the How movies. does that work with gaming? That That's my that's question. That's the thing. Like, for example, yeah. I got the Simpsons arcade game is on my PS3. Right. I have the X, uh, X-Men arcade game on a 360. If I delete those, they are not available anymore online. I cannot da- re-download them. That's, you know. DuckTales Remastered, same thing. If you have the physical mm-hmm. copy, you're good to go. But I have a digital copy mm-hmm. on the PS3. And I was going to download it on my Apple TV, but it's gone. So I can't. you know, so, as a preser- i mean, as a preservation of history, what do they what do they preserve the code so that they could always bring? I it, just like, some and there is are there a physical way, you know, like I don't know how that works. There are know? stories constantly coming out of small indie games disappearing from online, like from Xbox Live or yeah, PlayStation, I mean, because like they had an argument with the distributor or the con- or the contract expired. Game's off. That's it. You can't get it anymore. So yes, there are it's, pros it's, and cons. It's really like I, I there think, are pros and cons. I think it's it's easier. It's more efficient, and it puts it in a, it, its proper place. At the same time, there's there's an ethical question that needs to be asked, and the other question is, it, it's just for the sake of historical preservation that some of these physical copies should be saved. You know, agreed. In that, the vault. Yeah, but as vault. far if you're a gamer and you're just you're playing games, or you're even you're on a professional level where you're actually making money doing this. I I don't see it being a problem. All right. um, but to go back to Stadia, yeah. I'm definitely giving it two thumbs up. Good, I love it. The games are great. I can't wait for more games to come out on it. Um, mm-hmm. It's just easy. It boots up, and again, it was under two hundred dollars for this new quote unquote system, where you know oh, that is an expensive one. When wow. yeah, so when the when the well. PS5 and Project Scarlet comes out. freaking dollars, right? And you're spending that like every five, four or five years. Where mm-hmm. for, in theory, this is it. I never yeah. buy anything new well, I, for Google Stadia I, again except for games. I think you're going to start to see the end of physical systems for that very I reason. think physical everything. Just everything. Look at the yeah. music. I mean, no, even music. PlayStation, NES, they're all going to have to do what Google yeah. is doing. So. I, I think that's the way it's going. PlayStation, Xbox already has it. Xbox yeah. Game Pass and PlayStation Now. So, you know um, but yeah, so Google Stadia, definitely go out, check it out, get it. I love it. Um, you know, there's, there's a few exclusives. May, you know, I know for for those who like exclusives, maybe not enough for you to get a Stadia, but I think down the road it will be. Um, but yeah, I love it and uh, I can't wait to see what else comes out next Excellent. on it. And with that, I think we're actually going to, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, some Black Friday deals actually are starting to come out. Okay. Um, and with uh, next week's episode, we'll probably get more into that because uh, actually we would uh, be past Black Friday at that point. Um, and then we'll see if uh, – because Anthony, Anthony usually picks up a lot of games during Black is Friday. Right? Oh, In fact, I even saw uh, WWE 2K20 is already 50% off on PlayStation. And it just came out about a month That's ago. That's a whole other subject, <laughs> man. The things I've heard and seen is uh... – Hey, look. You know what? I don't feel bad for people who bought it day one because no. my PlayStation Classic, I bought day one at full price, is doing just as good as those who buy it today at but $20. It ended up being like the most hackable system in the universe. Am I right? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Okay. But, um, but yeah, so folks, um, yeah, we're going to we're gonna cut it here. Um, but I want to thank uh, Mario for joining this week. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. It's always uh, fun. No problem. <laughs> um, do you have anything to plug or just... At the moment, no, I okay. don't. Uh, restructuring. Fair we'll, enough. Yeah. We'll lot, call it restructuring. A lot of people are doing that. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> We're not. We're still moving on. That's right. And uh, hopefully next week, me and Anthony will be back on the show. Um, so check us yeah. out. Yeah. Well, listen, if I'm around, hit me up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, again, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, at Retro Gamers Podcast, uh, Twitter, at Retro Gamers Pod. Email us, email at theretrogamers.com and uh, our website, I think we still are maintaining, theretrogamers.com. Let us know your thoughts on the Sonic trailer, on Google Stadia, uh, on anything that you think. Uh, the, the Game Awards are starting to come up, uh, so we'll uh, me and Anthony will probably talk a little bit about that next week. And uh, your thoughts again, physical versus digital, keep it coming. And folks, with that, we will catch you right here next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast. Thank you.